Hello everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday the 6th of June. Today's topic is Capturing Creativity with Canva. I'm one of your show hosts, Lori Moffat, along with Peggy George and Tammy Moore. Thank you to Tammy for doing the closed captioning. Our special guest today is Lisa Johnson, and I'm going to turn the mic over to Lisa, or not to Lisa and Peggy. Peggy will introduce Lisa for us. Well, hello to all of you. We are so excited to have Lisa Johnson with us today as our special guest presenter. Many of you probably know her as Tech Chef for You, and maybe not as Lisa. But our participants, all of you, have been asking for a session on Canva for quite some time. So Paula Noggle contacted her PLN and asked for recommendations for an awesome Canva presenter and user. And Lisa Johnson rose right up to the top, and she agreed to come and share with us. If you'd like to get to know Lisa better, there is a fantastic video. It's actually a, a podcast in our Live Binder that you are going to want to listen to. It was an interview conversation she had with Adam Jones. And after you listen to that, you will be so inspired. And you're going to want to be just like her when you grow up. Lisa has done so many things. And right at the top of the list, she is the CEO and founder of Tech Chef for You. And the mission of Tech Chef for You is to provide technology integration resources and support to everyone with a huge, huge, huge splash, splash, splash of personality. And you're going to love that part of it. And lots of excellent help. Lisa has 12 years of educational experience that ranges from teaching high school English and middle school math to international curriculum development. She presents at lots of workshops. And she even runs technology integration camps across the state of Texas. She currently is serving in Eames ISD in Texas, which has a one-to-one -one iPad initiative K through 12, which is so exciting. And she's also been recognized as an Apple Distinguished Educator. You will see where she gets her Tech Chef name because she loves cooking up technology integrated lessons and sharing them with all of us. And you're going to be so amazed at how many ways you can integrate all of those apps you're already using into Canvas and work back and forth. And Lisa's going to share some of those examples with us. So I want to say welcome, Lisa. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'm going to move us on to the newbie question and ask you to take the mic and answer this for us. Why is it important for students to be creating and publishing and not just consuming online content. Take it away, Lisa. Well, first, thank you so much for that amazing intro. Um, I feel very humbled by that. Um, and, and also, thank you, Adam Jones, too, because that podcast was amazing. Um, it, he just, he's a great interviewer, so um, that was awesome. I'll be posting a, a blog post on that probably next week. So, you know, it's interesting, you know, more and more when you start Googling, you know, what are people looking for when they hire somebody and what are companies looking for, you know, you see a lot more with soft skills and, and visual literacy and things like that. And, and, you know, more and more we're having to communicate in a visual nature. And so, you know, it's so important that kids can use these things like, you know, psychology of color and, you know, slide design and, you know, online publishing and things like that, they can really use them to their advantage. And so I think that's the power of this, um, the power of this particular type of tool is it's very multifaceted. It allows students to, you know, who may not have a design aesthetic, it, it supports them and, and kind of gives them ideas and kind of scaffolds that for them. And it allows them to use this and to be published with this type of tool. So I think there's a lot of different ways that it can be used. And I'm, I'm a huge proponent of 
um, creating and publishing online. In fact, uh, I just finished, I don't know if it's even linked, Peggy, because it just went live la uh, yesterday. I just finished an Edutopia post on um, blending analog, um, you know, paper and, and pencil-based paths with digital tools. And so I've got a lot of examples there, but I've also got some rationale for why I think it's so important that, um, you know, things are moving past, you know, Web.10 um, and, and really getting into the world where, you know, you're, you're connecting with people and you're publishing. Um, I had an art teacher say, and I, I, I can't reference where this quote came from or, or where this came from, but she said, you know, many times people don't see it as art unless it's actually published to an audience so people can, you know, refine it and reflect upon it and things like that. And I, I think there's, there's a lot to be said about that. So um, moving forward, as, as we will, I'm going to move right into just a, a quick little bio page. Um, and actually, I don't know if you can see that that banner in the middle, that green banner was actually created in Canva. So uh, you're going to see a lot of Canva capturing creativity with Canva, and I'm really, really glad that we have so many instructional tech people because, you know, I myself am actually an educational technologist, so I use this, you know, not only with students, but also with adults and in a lot of different ways, so I hope that you really get something out of it. This kind of gives you a little bit more of my background. I'm, I'm a bit of a social geek, so if you're looking to connect, I've got a tech chef for you, Facebook, Twitter, and um, a Pinterest board as well. So I'm, I'm super excited about kind of sharing a lot of those resources with you today. So off we go. Um, I will be taking you through a tour of Canva at the end, but I, I thought it might be easier to just kind of do a few screenshots and, and kind of give you an idea of what you can actually create. When I'm first sharing Canva with people, I kind of liken it to publisher on steroids. You know, it, it has the idea where it's kind of that desktop publishing sort of thing, but it's, it's so much better. Um, you know, you have all the clip art built in. You can create pretty much anything that you want to create. And, you know, everything is customizable. So it's really, really neat. You can see, you know, you can make things for events. Um, so, you know, if you're having meetings or, you know, any sort of poster or things like that, you can use that. Um, and, and you can see that, you know, the infographic is new, blog title is new, they're constantly adding new things. You know, at the end of year, you could make like a gift certificate for your kids, you know, just all kinds of different things you can see there. They also do a lot with social media and email headers, and you're going to see how I've used quite a few of those. My favorite, I have to say, um, Peggy, I'm going to see if I can do this and, and it, if it works. And if it doesn't, then I, I won't try to um, draw on slides anymore. <laughs> um, but that, that presentation one, the ones in the document section, those two at the bottom are probably the ones that I use most frequently just because the size works so well for what my purposes are. So those two bottom ones um, that look like a mountain. And then additionally, they also have ads like Facebook ads and things like that. And don't get too, you know, sucked into, oh, well, you know, it's a Facebook ad. I can't use it for something else. You know, kind of look at the design because you're going to see that I actually use my Facebook ads and my Facebook banners for a lot of other things that have nothing to do with Facebook just because of the size of it. So, you know, don't, don't get too focused on um, what they're actually used for. So. Off we go. Last, um, last yesterday, <laughs> on Friday, which was yesterday, I created a very special board just for this um, webinar. And it's got all of the links and resources um, and examples that I'm showing you that I've created. Uh, it also has just a quick little explanation of how you can use it. And about 80% of them link back to either the blog or the thing link or, you know, how they're being used. So please know that those are all there for you. And um, I'm going to be constantly adding to it. But I'm going to break it down a little bit easier for you. So because I do have some teachers, I wanted to walk through kind of the, the teacher side of how kids might actually be using this, students might be using it. So um, collage of student work. This is really simple. You know, you can see there are three different images here. One is um, on the left hand side is using Bill Atkinson's photo card app and it's just like a little postcard that my son wrote to, um, you know, to Benjamin Franklin when he was doing his report. On the upper right hand side is a poplet 
and that's using the Poplet app. And then on the lower right-hand side is a map of where Benjamin Franklin was born. So, you know, as kids are working on things, it's a really easy thing to just make a collage of all of the digital things that they've done and then have one thing that they can do. So just one really quick little example are collages. And then, yes, collages, but let's really kick up collages to the next level. I know that Peggy had mentioned that you were using ThingLink, so I love ThingLink, and honestly, Canva and ThingLink together are pretty much the best thing that ever happened to the Internet, um, <laughs> and the iPad for that matter. So, you know, you can make an interactive collage really easily. So this original collage is made with Canva. It is my first graders, Amelia Bedelia book report. So all of those images are hand-drawn. We just took photos of them and uploaded them to Canva so you can make a, you know, one image. And then he did uh, telegamis, which is with the telegami app, which basically creates like a little video. And each telegami can be shared with a link. So we just linked on top of the images that corresponded with the telegami. So it's a really easy way to, you know, create a project. This example is actually on that Edutopia article I um, mentioned earlier. And what I love about this is you, you know, it's, it's yes, and Canva documents are totally mobile ready um, because they're just images. So you can use um, Canva on the iPad or you can use Canva on the web, actually. I, I appreciate that that was asked because I, I did not clarify that. So let me just backtrack for just one moment. Um, Canva is account-based, so students do have to create an account. Um, and Canva is available on the web, so, you know, if you have Chromebooks, if you have, you know, MacBooks, if you have, you know, whatever type of that, it's, it's very simple to get on and on the web. And Canva also has an iPad app that works really, really well. So it just depends on what device you have, but pretty much, um, no, you cannot add links to Canva itself. So basically what you do is Canva's only image creation. And, and I'll kind of walk through that towards the end. But uh, what happens is you can either create a PDF or an image with Canva. But that, that app smashes really well with um, ThingLink and things like that. So I'm going to walk through the next one for you. So this, again, is a collage. Many times, you know, you do things in class and you want to, you know, kind of share them. So this is a collage of um, what happened in Laura Wright's third grade class. They were using um, some apps and different things like that. And so we made a collage, um, downloaded the collage as an image, and then uploaded it to ThingLink. And then the beauty of this is you can add little, you know, text nubbins in ThingLink to kind of explain the collage and what was happening in those photos without taking away from the photos. So that's something to consider. And again, all of these are on that Pinterest board, and there are live links. You can go in and kind of hunt them down, and um, everything's there for you. Many times we like to take pictures of our classrooms. This is actually a secondary classroom. And so this one is, again, a collage. But then I've downloaded the collage and uploaded it to ThingLink. So each one of those little circles um, either goes to a text box or, or more information about what's happening in the classroom and that dynamic. So I think that's a really powerful thing of pairing it with um, Canva and ThingLink. This one right here, let's say you go on a field trip. I was very fortunate to go visit uh, Harvard Innovation Lab. And so I wanted to, you know, not only take pictures of what was happening there, but I wanted to, and, and so that's the collage. And then all of those little circular nubbins are things that I added in ThingLink. So if you haven't kind of played with using Canva and then putting it into ThingLink, totally need to use that. And yes, it would be so perfect for a parent night. Um, and, and don't get me started on that because there's a bunch of parent night examples I have as well. So I'm, I'm really hoping that you're digging that idea. So um, this year we actually did a selfie project where kids all took pictures of themselves and wrote essays. And we combined them into this one book. Well, the problem was that, you know, <laughs> some kids, you know, in high school don't turn in their image. And so I had to have a placeholder. So basically what I did is I created a placeholder for students who did not create, um, you know, their own selfie image. And I used this. So I, I created that entire image, that, that purple image in Canva. And then I just used it as a quick placeholder. And then the entire book was actually assembled in iBooks Author. 
So you can definitely do custom images for student projects. Something else, I don't know how many of you use iTunes U courses, but you can't get very far in creating an iTunes U course unless you have an image for the course. And I, I don't like just grabbing images from the internet. So I like creating custom images for those. So this is something that I've done. I've done several of these now, but all of my iTunes U courses are actually built with a Canva image because I can create a custom image. And the nice thing about that too is if you're creating several courses, you kind of want them all to look the same. So this might be something to consider um, using Canva for. I also, those of you, you know, most of us are on summer, some of us are on summer. So, you know, if you want to kind of do some summer projects, I have actually started creating posters for my, you know, classroom and office and things like that. These print out really nicely. You can download the image and, you know, send it to Shutterfly or Walgreens or something like that. So I actually have an 11 by 14 of this in my dining room. Um, so just kind of cool things like that that you can do as well. You can also create quotes. Um, Kevin Honeycutt has some amazing quotes. And so one of the things that he says is perfect is the enemy of done. And it's very, very true. I am a perfectionist. And so it also makes me very hard, Peggy knows this, um, <laughs> to, to get things done sometimes. So this is an easy sort of thing that you can do. You can create quotes in Canva and you can put these up in your classroom and do all kinds of sort of things. So. Again, I'm going to go through a bunch of examples and then I'm actually going to do a live demo at the end, but I just didn't want to mess up, um, you know, the slides by going too, too much back and forth. Um, I do want to mention, you can see this back slide and then you see the next one. I, I tend to use the same one and then duplicate it rather than always starting fresh again. Um, it, it helps with my perfectionism because if I've gotten it done the, right the first time, then I can just, you know, duplicate it and tweak it. So it, it does really help with that. So, you know, you might have accomplishments and achievements. One of my biggest ones was I achieved 21,000 people, um, followers on Pinterest. And that's, you know, I'm hoping that's a testament to the, the types of resources that I'm sharing on Pinterest. So I took the quote one and then just tweaked it a little bit so I didn't have to start fresh with that one. Um, I'm going to go into just a little bit of social media because I think some of you do use social media. I could tell a lot of you um, are using ed tech, you know, sort of thing. So, Creating pinnable images, I do a lot of blog posts and I share a lot of things and I got to do, um, sit through a, a session with Dai Kawasaki and Peg Fitzpatrick, uh, Fitzpatrick who are both huge in the social media and the interesting thing is I've pinned all three of these posts um, using just the images from it and then I chose the Pinterest one in Canva and created a, you know, a, a particular size and just doing that alone these actually end up getting pinned more. So talk about visual literacy, just because you start to use a rectangular image and a title on it, you know, it's interesting. But it is something to teach your kids too. You know, images matter and, you know, we've gone through an entire thing with slide design and things like that with our secondary students. So images and color really do matter. This next one um, was quite a, a task for me. I actually created custom boards um, for, or pinnable images for all of my boards, custom boards. It took me a really, 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 really long time to do this, but it, I think it looks better and I think it just kind of helps out. So if you're trying to do that, this is something um, that you can do. And then the, the cool thing about this is once you've got one, you just duplicate it, change out the text, duplicate it, change out the text. That's pretty easy. So. Um, I think this is my last little social media thing, but if you're using Twitter or you're using Facebook or things like that, um, what's nice is, you know, people, especially if you have like a, a classroom Facebook or something like that or a school Facebook, you know, the thing about Facebook is people aren't on it all the time, so they're not quite sure, you know, something that might, was shared three or four days ago. And so what I always do is I try to every week. I post this image and then I just post and it says like scroll through the feed for these five things that you missed. And so it's just a quick way to do, you know, kind of recap for people. Also, um, if you're doing blogs or if kids are doing blogs or, you know, writing assignments or things like that, it's a great way to make graphics for articles. Um, this was actually an Edudemic article that I wrote. But what's interesting is all three of these images that I have created a collage out of are actually all created with Canva as well. So you can see that, you know, people are jumping on the Canva bus um, and, and they're really rocking and rolling with it. So it's, it's pretty awesome. So 
Something else, I know Peggy mentioned this, is if you're using TAC or SMORE, I love TAC, I love SMORE, but, you know, the thing about TAC and SMORE is, you know, it's only as good as the images and the um, organization that you use with it. So what I like to do with TAC and SMORE is I create images in Canva and then I open them in, you know, TAC and SMORE rather than just, you know, pulling in you know, generic images from 500 pics or Flickr, and I think it really makes it look like a much, you know, cleaner and it's easier to follow. So that's something to consider as well. Um, keynote, and our students do this as well. Um, so it was interesting, our seniors were working on, a, or our juniors were working on a Vietnam Memorial project, and they basically had to do everything in Keynote, and then, um, I'm sorry, they had to do, you know, their, their Keynote slides, and then they had to uh, screenshot those and bring in to iMovie. Well, some kids decided to actually do all of their slides in Canva and then put them into iMovie to screen record. So you can definitely make really, really slick slides in um, Canva rather than using Keynote. So that's something to consider as well. This is another slide that I made in Canva rather than using it in key, um, rather than making it in Keynote. And honestly, I don't know that I could have made it look that good in Keynote just because I. I think once you get the idea of the design aesthetic, then you can kind of replicate it in Keynote, but it's hard if you don't know what looks good or, you know, what works. And the beauty of Canva is you can figure that out really quickly. So, a few more things. Um, Outlander just finished. So I don't know if there's any Outlander fans out there, but I'm a total Outlander junkie on stars. I've read all the books. Um, and so I wanted to do an Outlander stammer. So this is just a graphic that I built in Canva. And then I took it over to ThingLink, and then I have, you know, at each level, well, what would, you know, if they, kids were reading Sammer, hopefully they're not reading it, or <laughs> if kids were reading Outlander, um, hopefully they're not reading that until, um, you know, their senior year, something like that. But um, <laughs> if they were, <laughs> then um, this is an easy way. So each one of those actually takes you to a level task, and it's just Outlander theme because I like to, you know, do fun things like that. These are all interactive resources, so a lot of the um, professional developments that I do, I build the original image in Canva, which gives me a lot more to play with when I get the thing link, because I, I try to be very organized. I try to make things very web questy, but very easy to follow. So the images that you see in front of you are completely built in Canva, and then all I did is download the image, upload the thing link, and add links on top of it. So um, I appreciate that you love my summer resources. I worked very, very hard on those. <laughs> um, I've also built interactive lunch and learn. So um, the images that you see are screenshots, and then I added a little image of me in Canva and kind of cleaned up the image. I downloaded that um, image, and then I uploaded it to ThingLink, so I had all of the resources and step-by-step -step tutorials um, for my staff. So those are, again, all of these are linked off of the Pinterest board. Again, um, I have created, rather than just making a website of links, which can be really overwhelming to pretty much anybody, especially somebody with like ADHD or something like that, and I know a lot of um, our adult learners have that, so what I try to do is I've created this entire image um, in Canva, I download it, and then I upload it to Thing Link, so it makes it easier. Like if I'm just looking for literacy activities, I'm gonna look over here. So this is something that's really easy. I'm going to tell you, Canva and ThingLink are like your, your best friend. They're, they're like peanut butter and jelly, um, assuming you're not allergic to peanut butter, so that would be bad. Uh, <laughs> I know somebody was talking about parent nights, um, so I, I really want to mention this. So these two images can, um, yeah, totally like a visual live binder, exactly. So these two images you can see are created in Canva, and you can take them to Walgreens or Shutterfly and print them out as a four by six. And then the cool thing is you can actually put them in these little IKEA frames that sell for 99 cents and they make perfect table tents. You know, you could have a QR code that scans on them or you can just hand them out at parent night and have links or QR codes on them. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with this. So please don't think that you're just limited to, you know, just the, the computer. There's so many things that you can do with these sort of things. Um, if you're using Listly or TAC, I actually, these are Facebook cover um, 
So I choose the Facebook cover because I like the size of it. So then I use it as banners for Listly just to make them custom, or I use it as banners for tax to kind of break up the information that I'm sharing in tax. So those are again. And if you want to see like how this looks, because I know it can be kind of overwhelming to just see it, you know, a screenshot of it, then head over to that Pinterest board. All of them are there and they all link to the final product as well. So um, those of you who use Google Forms, you know, the Facebook um, cover is a perfect size to use as a Google Form. And when I'm taking notes in Evernote and then I share out those notes, then I also use the Facebook cover as my header for my Evernote notes. So that's another example of um, how I'm kind of using those. Also, guys, I told you I'm a, a total like Canva thing link junkie. So anytime I go to an event like TCA or South by Southwest EDU or any type of professional development where that I'm there for a few days, I really want to organize that information not only for myself so I can go back and find it easily and it's not just a bunch of links, but also organize it when I send it out to other people. So, um, yeah, it, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to be a little ADHD here, so I see this going in the feed. Yeah, it is such a struggle to create headers for pages, so Canva is kind of awesome for that. I, I absolutely love it. So going back to these, I've created the entire image in Canva, downloaded it, and uploaded the thing link. So like when people share links for their resources or links for their session, you know, I've linked to Google Slides and, and all of those things there, so it's really easy for people to find it. This is just another example. This is my South by one. And you can see, guys, once you get kind of um, a good pattern for it, I duplicate it at a different image and I kind of, you know, use the same thing. So I, I try to not um, recreate the wheel once I have something that works. So these are actually images from the event. And then, you know, I've added the logo of the event and then I've added all the links on top of it. So that's another way. Um, yeah, Peggy just said, do you have a personal library saved in Canva or do you download all the images for later use? So I do both. Um, everything is stored in Canva. In a second, I'm, I'm going to take you over there. I've just got a few more slides I kind of wanted to show you. And then, um, yes, I download them if I'm going to play, you know, use them for something else. I also use them to build infographics. So these are all infographics. And you can see, once you built one, I've just kind of duplicated it and changed out backgrounds and things like that. Um, the one that's red is basically the pros and cons of keeping your iPad over the summer. The one in the middle, we did a Shakespeare iBook um, pilot. And so I surveyed all the students, and so this was basically an infographic, um, you know, to, to display all that information. And then as our seniors are leaving us, many times they're not quite sure what to do with their photos and their documents and things like that. So I kind of walked them through that using the infographic on the far right, the digital transitions. And then I just finished something on the do's and don'ts of slide design, and so that's on the left, and that's one that is really big um, right now is that visual literacy component. So I took about 90 different slide decks and resources and, and just compiled them all to, into um, one infographic resource for teachers. And sometimes when I send out emails of resources, you know, I, I try to dress them up a little bit. So on the right-hand side is just an image I created to say, oh my goodness, did you know that now Canva has 25 plus EDU lesson plans? Isn't that awesome? <laughs> so uh, sometimes I create, um, you know, those images and I'll drop them into an email just to, you know, spice it up a little bit. So before we go to questions, I'm actually going to um, start sharing my desktop with you. So here we go, uh, maybe. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is what Canva looks like live. Um, when I first come in here, I've got, you know, just I, I can just see these three. I will tell you presentation, this one I use a lot. Poster I use a lot. Facebook cover I use a lot. Um, if I click on more, you're going to see all of those ones that I originally showed you in the um, the first part of my slide presentation. So you can see all of these. And then what's really cool is uh, for some of you, if you wanted to have used custom dimensions, you can actually type in custom dimensions here in either pixels, uh, millimeters, or inches. I have a 20 by 30 um, inch frame in my hallway. And I made a huge collage 
um, it's got like a 10 by 10 of all the photos from our family trip and then I actually took it to Office Depot and printed it out. So this is a great way for you to be able to do that as well. So I'm not going to use custom dimensions. I'm actually just going to choose one. So and then Peggy, you were asking, so everything that I've ever done, this is actually that collage I did in my hallway. Um, it was super tedious, by the way. <laughs> Um, these are all the ones that I've done. I actually duplicated this slide design one because I wanted to share it with my friend. She's in Qatar and she wanted um, to translate it into Arabic for some of her students and teachers. So I had duplicate that one. So if you see duplicate designs, that's probably why. But yeah, all the designs are here. And then if I choose one, let's say this one, it's going to open up a panel that allows me to basically do whatever I want to do. So if I came over here and I said, you know what, um, this one I really like, I'm going to drag it over here. And you know, that green is great. Um, and and in most times I, I would actually probably use that green, but it, it might be a bit much today. So maybe we're going to do it as pink. You actually have a color code here. So if you were trying to match color codes, um, HTML color codes, you could totally do that. I can change all of the text, so I could say Canva is awesome for teachers, and I could be like, well, you know, this text is fine, but um, it's got some really fun text. This this Laundrina, Laundrina shadow is actually one I use for one of my infographics. I can change out the size if I need to. I can change the color of the text if I feel like it's not, um, you know, enough. In this case, um, I actually like the white, so I'm going to go back and keep the, uh, the white image that I have there. And if I go to my uploads over here, I actually have, this is a photo that I took of um, my son. It's in the Edutopia post. If I drag it, notice how it immediately becomes the background, which is really nice. And then all of these things I can move around. And I could make these different colors if I wanted to. Um, I can write, students can use Canva too. And then I've got text. So I can add just a normal bit of text or I can add, you know, just like this. I know that you see this one floating around the internet. Um, hello, my name is. So this is one that you quite, see quite a bit. So I'm going to write, um, you know what, we're going to write, hello, my name is Visual Literacy. <laughs> and then you can change all of these things, which I absolutely love. So, you know, that, that orange is, I guess, okay. It's not really my color palette. I'm a, a turquoise girl myself. So I can move these. I can put this over here. So that's great when I, I'm able to kind of move things around. And then I have grids. I have frames. So I can come over here and let's say I wanted to add this. Obviously, this may not be very pretty now, but I'm, let, let's say I want this here. And then I have a photo so I can bring in a photo about my email bankruptcy. And what's cool about this is it's very Instagram-y. So you can tap on filter and you can change out your filters. In this case, it probably makes more sense to make it grayscale and I can change all of these things like that. So that's Super, super helpful. Again, if I go to the search and I get out of the frames, um, they have shapes that I can use here. And actually, those ones that you saw that I was using, um, I use this transparent shape and then I add text over it. That's the ones I was using for my professional development. So that's my, my little secret on that. Um, they also have lines. They have illustrations and, and clip art that you can use. They have icons that you can use. Um, I use quite a bit of these, like the Twitter icons. And now if I put the Twitter icon here, you know, or if I put a Facebook icon here and moved it over, then I might save this and, and upload it to thing link and then actually, you know, do that sort of thing. So I can change it to any color I want. Once I'm done, I have a few options. I can share this. You can share it um, on social media. You can also share it as an email and editable design, which is what I did with um, my friend so she could actually um, translate it. You can also download these as an image or a high quality PDF. The PDF is great for printing. Um, the image is obviously great for using for thing link and a bunch of other things. You can do a search as well. Um, so if I just wanted to search for an iPad, some of these do cost money. A lot of them are free. 
So notice this iPad, it's pink, I love pink, but maybe I want it to be blue. That's the beauty of their clip art um, and their icons is you can actually change the color and do all kinds of cool things with that. So that's kind of Canva in a, a very easy nutshell. They also have backgrounds that you can use as well, and they're customizable backgrounds. So let's say that this gray or this green is great, but again, you know I'm a turquoise girl, so now I can actually change the um, background as well. You mentioned um, a public profile, so everybody has a public profile. Any designs that you want to make public can be here. So these are some of the designs that I have created in Canva, and I've also written about them. But since um, since we since yesterday, I've actually pinned all of these to Pinterest, so that was um, a little bit easier to share them, just because not everybody's going to come to Canva to find them. And I have to show you, I would be remiss if I showed you. So if you're feeling like, wow, this is really overwhelming, I don't think I could make things this pretty, um, just, you know, from scratch, then they've got these live workshops, which are amazing. And these are actually really great for kids, too, because they help them, you know, choose font pairings and color images and things like that. But wait, there's more. They also have lesson plans. So they have all of these lesson plans will actually link to um, a PDF you can download with some examples. Presidential report card is great. Um, extreme graph makeovers, math vocabulary, um, character analysis, historical infographics. So please know that this is not just for us, although I, I use it a ton, but it's, it's for students as well. And, you know, they've got mathematical modeling, um, an element wedding invitation. I totally never would have thought of that, but I love the idea. And um, they got initial selfies, which I think is great. They could hang all of these up in the classroom for elementary. Um, fables. This is one of my favorite where they could do historical figure fan pages or scientific element fan pages and then you could get like a Facebook feed for like an element or um, a historical figure. So, you know, there's so many things that you can do with it and I'm, I'm just so, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that I use you know, I use all the time. Um, so, just to remind you before I, I click back to the presentation, Everything, I've got 43 examples of how to use Canva, and every single one of these links to, not only does it tell you what you can do, um, it links to the example and, and maybe even a full post depending on, on what it is. So please know that these are all here and everything is available for you. It is not uh, going away. And then you can kind of pin and, and um, curate as you see fit. So I am going to. Um, figure out how to not have my application sharing on anymore. <laughs> and away we go. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So so that's kind of my my spiel for um, Canva. Are there any questions? I did capture a few, Lisa. You answered a couple as you went along. Um, will you tell us the difference between Canva and Canva EDU? Um, yeah, there's not really a difference between Canva and Canva EDU. Mm -hmm. they're, they're essentially the same thing. So a, a little bit of history on Canva. Canva um, was, they used to have some background in um, a yearbook company sort of thing. So they were taking all of those elements that yearbook companies do so well and they were making it available for the general public in really, really excellent design. So, you know, that, that's kind of the background on that. They've, they've launched kind of an EDU thing. It's not, it's not different um, than, it's the exact same product when you go in, but they're really trying to show, you know, this isn't just for people, you know, bloggers and, and real estate people and, you know, social media people. This is for everybody, and so that's kind of why they've gone into that, um, mm -hmm. you know, that, that side of it. But if you just Google, you know, Canva um, lesson plans, then that site will come up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so every icon in a Canva image can have a link added to it? 
assuming you had the links to the image with another tool like ThingLink? Yes, yes, definitely. And and Fern, I will tell you, um, my original canvas were not that good. Um, I think that's that's you know with anything, you get better as you start seeing people using it and using it well, and you really just kind of you know, start getting your own style and your own color aesthetic and things like that. I mean, it takes time. I would say it took me about a year or two to really get where what I felt like was, you know, decent using this tool. Actually, Pat, I think I can answer your question about Google accounts because that's how I signed up for Canva yesterday. So, yes, oh, they awesome. can log in with their Google accounts. Um, can you choose to keep your images private? Yeah, um, actually, all the all the images are automatically private. The only reason they mm -hmm. would be shared is if you if you you know it, it defaults to private. Um, okay. Yeah. And um, is the, do do Canva accounts have a class account? So all, at, all students are within a class? No, not at this point. Um, okay. Yes, you could totally use these with blogs. By the way, Virginia. Um, it, they're just images. You could use them with anything, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. I love that aspect of it. Um, yeah, no, they don't. They don't have an EDU um, teacher account. Not the class point. groups like some other EDU sites do. Okay. Yeah, not not at this point. Um, it might be on their roadmap, but not at this mm -hmm. point. I will tell you. I know Peggy just asked, what is the best way to get started with Canva? Mm -hmm. I would, I would one, you know, take a look at some of the examples I shared and kind of get a feel for, you know, which ones, um, you know, you like, where, which, how you plan on using it, and then that that tutorial section, those are actually live tutorials. So you click on one and it opens a template and it tells you step by step what to do. So it's mm -hmm. actually like a live tutorial. So I would, I would play with a few of those and kind mm -hmm. of get a feel for um, them. And you know, it's, it's summertime, so it does give you a little bit of opportunity to kind of play. And, and I mean, I've made them for, you know, birthday card invitations and all kinds of things. So use them for personal, too. Mm -hmm. Can you make copies of other people's images in Canva and then remix them? Yes, if you've made them public. That's what I did. I had shared that one okay. with Yolanda so she could um, translate it. Mm -hmm. Well, those were the questions that I was able to capture. Does anyone have any other questions for Lisa? You can type them in chat. You have many public ones. I, I think the answer to that is, is yes. Yes. Um. Um, that, that Pinterest page is, yeah. there's like about almost 50 of them. I haven't gotten done with all of making sure they're public. Um, mm -hmm. The only ones I don't have public, Virginia, are the ones of my kids, just because I right. I try not to share their images online a whole lot, or if I do, it's like the back of their heads and things like that. So the personal ones I don't have. Um, yeah, and I use Canva to make picture collages all the time for home, um, you know, for grandparents. I've actually made them for like Valentine's cards and things like that, and then I just go print them out at Walgreens for, mm -hmm. you know, it's super cheap to do that. So yes. Yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good question, Virginia. She said, "If it's a paid image, can that be copied on your Canva?" Um, I feel like yes, but most likely it will be watermarked unless you yourself pay for it. Mm -hmm. That's that's the sense I got yesterday when I was yeah um, just previewing Canva. I very, very, very rarely have ever had to, I mean, I would say like 2% of the canvas I've ever used, I've had to um, buy something. You know, mostly mm -hmm. I, can, I can work within my free realm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, uh, yeah, the images yeah. cost just a dollar, um, and, and that's pretty affordable, but Fern, please know that um, yes, they cost a dollar, but um, it's a dollar for 24 hours. So if you don't download that um, after you paid for it, you know you can then basically like if you came back to it 48 hours later, you would have to pay for it again. So that's 
the womp, womp, womp part of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, you could totally upload your own scanned images. Um, is it easy to paste the Google images on your own photos? Um, yeah, are you saying, um, yeah, like actually all the, I, I put all of my Canva stuff into Google Slides, so that was pretty easy. And then, yes, you could, you know, download Google images and, you know, download your own photos and then upload them into um, Canva. Ah, you said an arty person could sell images on Canva. Um, I mean, you could definitely make your own design and then, you know, sell them or, or have sort of a, a marketplace for them, I would imagine. Any other questions? Right. Yeah, I would think so too, Peggy. You don't actually sell them on Canva. You create them on Canva. No, you would have to sell them somewhere else, definitely. Like creative market or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or Etsy. Ah, you do get a URL for your images in Canva um, if you're sharing them. So each one of those ones on my public profile has a URL to it. Mm -hmm. That makes them even easier to share. Yes, yes. Although honestly, because you can download them as an image, mm -hmm. I just share them mm -hmm. as the image file. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, the design feature makes it easier. And once you kind of have your own design, and, and play with it, then I just duplicate things, add a few things, upload a different photo, and I, I'm good to go. So it, it is a process, but I feel like it's made me more efficient. Actually, um, the URL, I think sharing the image is better on Twitter because images get retweeted more often than URLs. That seems to be the end of our questions. We'll go ahead and, yeah, any other questions? Okay. I've already asked a few times for that. <laughs> I see somebody else, a couple other people typing, so we may have other questions. Okay. Awesome. I'll turn the mic over to Peggy, who will talk about our upcoming shows. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. That was just such a great tour of the possibilities of Canvas. And I know we're all thinking we can't wait to get out there and start trying some of them. We really appreciate the Pinterest board you created for us. That makes it so easy to go straight to those resources. So thank you. We only have two more shows before we take our summer break, so I hope you'll be able to join us for both of them, and they both happen to be related to math. Next week, we're going to have Colleen King with us to give us all of her latest updates on the math playground, and then following that, we're going to get to learn all about the 10 marks math program. Then we'll take the month of July off. We actually take it off starting with the week of ISTE through July, and we will be back August 1st. So I hope you'll all come and join us. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest Endeavor, he's gathered together all of his um, PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar. So you can have your own Blackboard Collaborate room for an event. As long as you make the session public, it's free. You can nominate a featured teacher when you exit the show and um, in the live binder, the link for the URL is there. 
here's the large link, uh, you can even nominate yourself for the Feature Teacher of the Month. As you exit the session, the Classroom 2.0 Live survey should open. And this is the URL for the survey. You can also take the link in the chat box. Or you can go to the Resource tab in the Live Binder. And also at the bottom of the survey, you can request a professional development certificate. These will now print out with your name here. Um, but please use a personal email address to receive this. So in the request, it asks you to type out your name as well as the email. Uh, school emails tend to block this from getting to you. There's also a URL for the survey um, here as well. The video and audio collections both are available on iTunes U and by RSS feed at the Classroom 2.0 Live website, including the entire recording. So there are many ways to get the show archives. Again, special thanks to Lisa Johnson, Tech Chef for You, to Steve Hargadon, founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution, to Weebly.com for providing our website, and to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and of course to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs>